Hello everyone. In this video I will be talking about uh, my buggy speedrun which currently holds the world record in the category. I will be trying to beat a time of 26 minutes and 12 seconds which was done by Xenox D. I'll be talking about my strategies and uh, specific things that I try do try doing in a race. And most of it is really not that revolutionary but I'm trying to get people interested in improving my ideas from this run. So I will try to share some of my wisdom. Some of you hopefully find it interesting. Um, so, Fungal Freeway. Uh, it's a very simple track. I think there's only one trick which not a lot of people have re realized exists. If you really do a good, good run, you can actually collect uh, the, the speed power-ups from one lap to another. From lap 1 to lap 2 I failed to do it, unfortunately. But I think I will succeed doing it from lap 2 to lap 3. So this single speed power up will become a double speed power up and if you obviously get to do it in a second lap then you get to collect third power up for speed in lap 3 and it's sort of slightly faster if you do it but it's not something that I will restart my run on uh, so like I said fungal freeway really simple you can do it like maybe one second faster maybe maybe two if you really really do a pixel perfect run or something but most of my runs mo most of the races will be done with loads of mistakes, there's there's so much room for just simple mechanical improvements of the things that I do. Fungal Freeway Choki City will be uh, mostly just trying to collect triple speed and keeping it through the run. There's like a couple things on Choki City that I think that you can do better than just collecting triple speed, which is something that I'll talk about. Uh, but some of that will be just uh, some of that will be the main point of pretty much all the races, even the one which have, even the one which have um, the um, this, the shortcuts in them. You will usually just ignore the shortcuts and try to get triple speeds. So here, one trick that you do in Choki City is you collect this yellow. If you don't, that doesn't matter. But you don't need the first power up. You just try get a good turn there, because this triple speed will last throughout the lap. So you collect this red, and it just keeps going. I think I will do the same thing now. You go yellow, red, collect this yellow, but you ignore the red. You just try and get a good turn because the triple speed will continue. Uh, sometimes it gets tricky if you do a really good run like I did so far in this race. Uh, where at the start of the second lap, uh, the start of the third lap, you're just about to, you will start to um, pass, pass over the other buggies. And sometimes they'll bump you over the colors that you're trying to collect. But I was lucky here and it didn't happen. Uh, this is like usually a point which I will always, always consider restarting. It's uh, a thing that I do like if I don't enter muddy slipway by 3 minutes and 5 seconds I restart. That's sort of a threshold. And usually I just do the first 3 races and if I'm not happy I just restart. But I will be happy and I'll just keep going. When I started attempting to speedrun this, uh, this game I uh, I thought that Muddy Slipway was a very important point because it has a very apparent uh, shortcut that you can do with the invisibility but in a way it's really useless. Uh, in this specific run I will not collect it not even once and generally I've realized that it's best if you don't collect it at all. It's actually just better if you collect triple speed throughout the map. So y I'm supposed to get that yellow and then this red to continue the triple speed, but I failed to do it. And at this point, uh, what what goes through my head is if I accidentally collect the blue and the yellow, I will go for the invisibility. But if I don't, I just keep going for yellow red because it takes a lot of time and care to specific to specifically collect the invisibility, and I just don't think it's worth it. But uh, other than that, uh, coincidentally, this mighty slipway is going to be filled with mistakes. The third lap is going to be horrible, as you'll see. That's already a mistake. Uh, yeah. One thing that actually I noticed on this lap, on this uh, race, about the entire game is that uh, getting the angry face power up, green and orange, really helps you around with driving along bumpy roads, especially when you have triple speed. I think it just uh, magically gives you, magically gives you more, more weight or something and then you just stick to the floor much better and it's easier to drive. So I messed up already one speed, 
Now I'm gonna mess up the second one. And that loses about, I think, three or four seconds on this race. Uh, but yeah, Muddy Slipway just... I think the best way to go through this race is like something that I've tested through uh, many runs. It's just best to ignore the invisibility. It's completely... I'm not gonna say it's useless. I think it's good to have it in mind if you are not collecting triple speed. Or if you're gonna, you, if you're about to lose triple speed by the end of the first lap, then it's useful to, then it's useful to collect the visibility. My slipway buggy beach for Kikano. So buggy beach is a uh, thing, is a race that I just don't like. It's just bumpy and it's too fast because you're supposed to have triple speed all the time, and it's just boring. It's just driving around in a circle, and when you take a look at a map like. Velo Kikano, which is also just mostly about collecting triple speed and running around, driving around, is just much more fun. Um, yeah, this is gonna be a very flawed run. This specific race is very bad. So, some of you may have noticed or may not have, but in on the speedrun layout on the right, uh, the order in which I will be doing the tracks is going to vary and it's not going to be the same as everyone else uh, you can do that, you can just change the order of the <coughs> of the tracks and for example I will do the tracks from stage 1 and 2 and then stage 4 and then stage 3 for last I've realized that in that way you actually save about 10 seconds just on on the time that you spend in the hole driving from one track to another. I will talk a bit more about that when the time comes when the skip actually happens. <coughs> Which will be after Valkykano. So yeah, Buggy Beach, uh, I've lost, lost, lost the speed once, which immediately just makes the run bad. But overall, I was very happy with my time. And another threshold that I'm gonna look at is ending Velokikano before, that's also a mistake, <laughs> ending Velokikano before uh, 10.05. And I think I'm gonna be very clear of that in this run. So yeah, when you look at the, uh, the, the holes from right around Velokikano, you will notice that in order to move from Velokikano back to to stage 3 you have to go backwards and it's a really long hole to get there and the hole to stage 4 is shorter and later it saves more time because you don't have to wait for the elevator to lift you up you can, you can just fall down the elevator So the reason why I like Willow Kikon a lot, or like why I re why I like it more than Buggy Beach, is because even though the tactic is the same, you just try and collect speeds, and you try and maintain triple speed throughout the map, which I tragically fail at doing. Uh, it's just segmented in a way that makes it really fun. You you have this tunnel at first, which is fun, and then you have this bridge, which is also really fun. You have the volcano, which is really fun, and like this last part, which is just you going straight is sort of not fun, but all around, I think this is a pretty cool, pretty cool race, and I think it gets really interesting in Challenge Two, which actually can be said about Buggy Beach as well. In in Challenge One, it's awfully boring, but in Challenge Two, uh, where you get more colors, it actually is a very challenging track. I think I failed this red again. Yeah, wait, that was tragical. And now you lose triple speed again. Anyway, not a good Velokikano, but also not a bad one. Because once I started doing this speedrun, uh, Velokikano was like the most challenging map for me. It was the map 
the race where I lost the most time on average. Okay, so going back to going back to what I said before about track order. Now I will go from the Lukikano to Catacombs, which is gonna be a real long path actually, but it's gonna save me time eventually. And it's just all around much shorter. Not much, but noticeably so. So now instead of going backwards, you just go on. You just continue going down the path, which connects, which will connect uh, stage two to stage four. That was bad. <laughs> that was really bad. Okay, Catacombs is generally my favorite map. And when I started doing the speedrun, it became even more so my favorite map. And I'm gonna try and explain why a bit more in detail. So here I do a mistake. I'm supposed to collect this yellow to the right, but I don't. And then I get speed here, which allows you to get triple speed in the first first lap. And I forgot about it when I was doing the speed the speed run. So that's a that's something that's a mistake already. Now I'll collect double speed. And this is a really complicated map. And the point is, in every single lap, you're gonna try to do something very different. So you collect that orange, it actually matters. Um, and by the end of this lap, you're trying to get flying in order to get the rainbow, in order to unlock the, the in order to unlock the shortcut. But a very interesting thing that I noticed is you don't need the shortcut for the shortcut. You need the shortcut because it allows you to get triple speed and then you want to maintain the triple speed throughout lap three. So now I will do the shortcuts, but I will only do it in order to get uh, a single speed power up, which comes at a later time than this. So if I go yellow red now, I don't get to maintain it. I, I lose the buff before I get to collect the next one. But when doing this one, you can actually collect the second speed, which allows you to collect the third speed. And then if you drive well, which I don't do in this run, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, but if you do it, if you do perform it really well, you can actually uh, get triple speed and just maintain it through, throughout the, the rest of the map. So here I get double speed and then I get triple. And that's, that's really useful. So here, in, in ideally, I think I'm gonna fail it like just one frame short, but ideally you wanna ignore the shortcut and continue the triple speed here. And I just barely miss out on it, but I think that would be, no, I don't think, I, I know that that's like the ideal way to do this entire track. And it's such an interesting track be just because of that, because it doesn't actually feel like repetitive because every time you just do a different thing, it doesn't feel like three laps. It feels like one very long lap, I think. It also has a lot of these branches, sort of, and it's just very fun. It's like, very fun, yeah. Okay, now we're getting to Boogie Nights. Um, not very interesting. There's like one trick that I like to point out is really uh, necessary. So in this entire run, we don't obviously pause time ever. My time always runs, even through the loading screens, even if uh, other boogies get red, blue, yellow and collect the stopwatch to stop me. It never, it never, we never pause the time. And Boogie Nights is a map which is very <laughs> very much filled with that buff so red red blue yellow is really like you get hit by that a lot in this in this race and since it's such a short race sometimes like a lot of times what happened to me is that exactly at the point where i'm trying to cross the the end just the end mark uh i get i get stopped for two seconds and that's why i've realized that every second counts so this is the only race in the entire, this is the only race in the entire game where you actually want to collect red, blue, yellow because it actually matters. I think sometimes it just saves you two seconds.
other than that, you don't need a shortcut. There's a way to, you should, like, you can get flying, and you can uh, collect the rainbow, and then you can collect invisibility in order to get through the shortcut, but the race is just much better if you ignore the shortcut and get flying and get double speeds if you can. Frosty Park. So Frosty Park is uh, the race that I last worked on before attempting the speedrun. So I was just doing some last tune-ups trying to figure out which is which is going to be my plan for each race. And Frosty is the last uh, map that I made a change to. And then I said, and I'm ready, like I can do this. So I actually, I find this track interesting because it's so uninteresting. So the color scheme is just horrible. There's nothing fun that you can do in here. And you can like collect flying, but it's actually not that useful. And at the very beginning of the map, you can collect the tire thing, which is uh, purple, red, and green. But it's just not useful. It just makes you slower. So you just collect yellow, red, and complete the map. Uh, so I think the best way to the best way to actually drive this is to actually. Okay, I'm gonna make a really big mistake here, by the way doesn't matter. So the best way to drive this is probably like if you could do it perfectly, you probably want to you probably want to uh, collect just the speed and then don't don't go through this portal but rather try to drive perfectly through the very bumpy road. But it's very hard to drive perfectly through the bumpy road and then once I, once I have a good run, I will mostly just try to finish that good run con in a consistent way. So this is the consistent way that I do it. I just ignore the bumpy parts and I go through the portal, and it's usually, I'm not sure if it's faster, but like it's it's consistently uh, similar, and I think it's easier to attempt, to just like, uh, to perform. I lose a lot of time on it though, because I failed, but I think this was, other than that, pretty, pretty straightforward. Up and Dune. So Up and Dune is, I think hmm. Up and Dune might be the map which most utilizes its, or its shortcut. It's actually, without doing the shortcut, it's completely unplayable and much, much, much slower. So what you want to do is collect invisibility. On the first lap, you get triple speed, and then you could maintain the triple speed through the rest of the uh, race. And that's what I'll do. I think... Hmm, no, I will, at some point later on, lose the triple speed due to a mistake, but other than that, this was really, really, really when well driven up and doing, I think. So yeah, very simply collect invisibility, get triple speed in this shortcut, and then try maintaining it to the end. I also don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's very, I, I don't think it's useful if, let's say you wanted to do the shortcut again. I think it's just best to, I think it's much faster to go around than go through the portal, then go through the lift, through the tunnel, if you have triple speed. You just don't wanna stop yourself to control the, the, the buggy very carefully to collect the colors. You just wanna run through the map and ignore everything, just collect the triple color and and run around because you have to wait for the lift to get up and I don't think it's faster and it's like I said once again really hard really hard to actually collect the invisibility if you're driving fast and once you have triple speed it's extremely hard to co to control the car mountain retreat um, I think also a very, very interesting map because it's I thought it was very simple and I don't I no longer think so Okay, okay, yeah, this that's the trick, yeah. That's that's 10 seconds, by the way. Okay. Mountain Retreat. I thought it was very simple, and I thought there's, like, only a couple things that you can do in it, but it actually, I think, shows a really interesting concept that I've... Um, that I realized only when attempting this speedrun, even though I've been a fan of this game and I've played it for probably about hundreds of hours since I was a kid. Uh, but I've just recently realized how important it is 
to collect triple color at the exact same time. So I will go. There's a way where you can have triple triple speed before this point, but it's actually not good because if you collect this triple speed at that point, you can actually maintain it throughout the map. And once again, that's the entire story. You just wanna collect the triple speed to collect it to keep it going throughout the map. So I, if if I so you're gonna see now I'm gonna fail. Now I'm gonna lose the speed. I think, and then what's gonna happen? I'm going to okay. That's that's really trippy. Yeah, I'm gonna lose the triple speed, and I'll look at this. So now something you can do is you get this yellow, that's fine. You get this red, and now I'm gonna change the strategy because now I need a triple speed, but now this is a less, this is not as good as before because now once I get to the point where I connect, where I collect the next speed, this one will run out. So you actually wanna have double speed, collect triple later so that it lasts even later, which will allow it to. You see here, I wouldn't, I would never be in time to collect that, so I just don't even go for it. Anyway, this is like, I think this is a very interesting map actually, and there's so many things that you can collect. You can get flying, you can get tires, you can get. There's also like, the the shortcut thing, which enables everyone to get triple speed whenever they want. But like I said, it's actually perfect when you don't do this. It's actually you're just better off without doing that and collecting triple speed at this point. And you can't do triple speed at that point unless you do it like I did in the first in the first lap. Okay. Yeah, other than that, yes, monitor read done really well. I think what's the time? Like six, seven seconds? How much did I five sec okay. Minus four point four. Really good. Sure. So big shout out to, oh, I forgot the name of the runner who discovered this trick, or I don't know if he discovered, but he showed it to me. It's Alfie Game, I think. I think it was him who who discovered, uh, or who who I learned it from, uh, the trick on this track, which is, I think, uh, probably the only glitch that we actually abuse in the entire run. So... The game, I think, works in a way that it, it 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 doesn't want you to move backwards. When you're moving backwards, it doesn't actually trick. It doesn't actually follow your follow your movements. It it uh, starts. It just takes you back. Look look my green. If you follow the green dot, it's gonna be really weird and messed up. Anyway, the game has sort of checkpoints that it checks whether you've you've gone through. So you don't, so that you can't perform any shenanigans like you do, like you could do in on this map. Like if you just go right to the right here, the game is gonna say, "Wait, you're going the wrong way. That's not what you're supposed to do. You skipped a checkpoint." But this portal right here works in a way that it it resets your position, and maybe it's a one specific bug or like this one specific race might be the only one where uh, they forgot to check for that for that like specific outcome. But yeah, the, the portal resets your position and it tells the game that you actually aren't going the wrong way. It just says you're fine because the portal resets your position, you're fine. Okay. Um, and I think that's a really big big thing because it's the start of... So it's, it's the, first, it's the first, uh, first sort of glitch that you actually abuse in the game. I think it's really cool. So at this point, I knew that I can um, drive Creepy Cops well and just finish the game. And just, yeah, complete the speedrun. I was convinced I could do it, and all I had to do it do is not perform badly, which luckily I don't. Actually, no, I perform it really badly. But uh, I finish it in a really cool way. So the first two laps are going to be tragically bad. Yellow and miss the red. <laughs> so there's also a shortcut on this map, but you just don't collect it. It's not worth it because uh, it's simply not worth it. It's really hard to collect it for starters. And once again, the moral of the story is triple speed is way stronger than people realize. And you should just mostly collect triple speeds to get to get through the map. Grip cops. Okay. So it's. Uh, I'm mostly gonna fail here, 
but that's gonna be it I uh, I think from this point on I I drive okay so I maybe here yeah I'm gonna get I think I'm gonna collect triple speed here successfully and then the rest of the map is sort of okay uh, but yeah uh, thank you for watching and if you have any questions I would actually love to hear them or like any comments will be appreciated uh, I really like this game and I really like doing the speedrun it made me love the game even more and I think I'm gonna try after a while once I once I uh, I take a break from this uh, I might just come back and try doing challenge too because I think that's gonna be more fun it's gonna be much more variety it's it's just simply might uh, might encourage more more different um, strategies to complete one particular track and I think there's just so much more room to explore on challenge 2 than on challenge 1 but yeah that's it so I will just here is here's the finish time and that's it 5 seconds better than the previous record goodbye